think it's quite unusual us both sitting here because we, we're not the sort of normal conventional actors. Yeah. And I think one of the things people would like to know is, you know, how you got into it. What made you decide to be an actor? I, I, I just fell into it, really. Like, probably we all do, don't we, when we come from the flats, where we come from and whatever. We're not, we're told that we can't really do these sort of things. But in my situation, in 1986, and I won't go into this too much, I'll just paraphrase it because it's a, a long story, a long, long story. I got arrested for a murder, two attempted murders and an armed robbery, which I was totally fitted up by the police. They totally fitted me up. I don't know why they'd done it, still don't know why they'd done it. Anyway, I was on remand as an ACAT for three and a half months. And then an alibi come out. I mean, this is all part of the long story, which I, you know, I can go on for an hour on this one. But then, anyway, cut a long story short, I got out of it. And I started getting a little bit paranoid about how the establishment can actually just lift you off the streets. So I decided to go travelling. So I, went to, I lived in Israel for, and Egypt for two years. I got involved in music out there because I played the guitar and, and I started busking and I got involved with a band, joined a band, started gigging around there and I've got a bug with the gigging and the, and, the, and the bit of music. When you say you lived in Israel, do you, you what, like a kibbutz type of thing or...? Well, that's another funny story. I, I, I did, yeah. I, I, I started on a kibbutz but they kicked me off after six months. Right. For, uh... Tell us about that, Ed. What happened on the kibbutz? Well, I've, I've, I've just been released from this thing that I've just told you yeah. about. I'm in Israel on a, on a kibbutz. Now, on a kibbutz, well, it is. It's a total 100% socialistic, communistic regime. Yeah. Where everyone's got every, the same thing. Everyone eats together and uh, wash, does the same washing. Everyone, you know, no one's got something that another person ain't got. And what they do... They get people from all over Europe and all over the world called volunteers that go on the kibbutz and pick bananas and oranges and... Uh. Anyway, I've ended up slipping in. They're all little sort of 18, 22 year old students and things like that, which I found it a little bit hard to adapt to at the <laughs> beginning of it, really, after yeah. just coming out of where we come from. Yeah. But in the town, there was a little Russian mafia sort of... Uh, crew who I yeah. slipped into yeah. because I don't know we find them don't we you yeah, just yeah. find them didn't you yeah. so they asked me if I wanted to go on the kibbutz and start changing all the dollars up for shekels mm. so that's what I started doing I started doing all the black market out there on the kibbutz for the shekels and the dollars so that's how you sort of nicked your living now well yeah I, I didn't have to nick your living it was just there you know everything's quite, done on the kibbutz they give you all your food they give you your Accommodation, they give you absolutely yeah. everything, yeah. but you just got that radar out of the world, apparently, really, haven't you? <laughs> anyway, I started changing all the bits and pieces up. They found out, kicked me off the kibbutz, stuck in Israel, no money, yeah. no ticket home. I, I'd say that I was earning money, I was only earning sort of 30 quid a week, 40 quid a yeah. week, changing them up, sort of thing, giving them a couple of points over the, the bank. And I joined a band out there, started working in a band and ended up, ended up living with the, the Israelis, of the, the band, they were all the Israelis, and they ended up learning Hebrew and everything, you know, <laughs> speaking Hebrew with them and everything. But anyway, I got, I got the pox of that and I come home to London, joined, uh, formed another band with some people that I grew up with and uh, that all went pear-shaped. Then... I walked into a local theatre company called the London Bubble. Right. Very good setup. By mistake, or was you looking no, for No, no, I was looking for something yeah. to do, and I knew yeah. this little theatre company was up the road, and yeah. I walked in there, and I walked in there, and there was a guy called Adrian Jackson, who, I, who I'm eternally grateful to now. You know, I just walked straight up to him and said, look, I want to be an actor. Yeah. And he went, well, you know, we're workshopping upstairs, so you, you might want to come up and see what we're doing sort of thing. So I ended up going upstairs, sitting on the sidelines. And it was a very middle class setup. There weren't a lot of people like me in now. So I was sitting at the sidelines watching uh, 
watching all these people become like aspirins and trees and you know the, the cliche. When you say aspirin, what, 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 what? Well, you know, like they say being aspirin melting in a glass. Oh, and I got you. Fizzled <laughs> down like... Fizzled down. So what that. was you, an aspirin or a tree? No, I was on the sidelines. Oh, I, I gotcha. weren't going to have it. I weren't having it. I weren't having it. I thought, this ain't what I want to be. I want to yeah. fuck it. Yeah. I want to be on movies. So you don't want to be an aspirin? I don't know what this is yeah. going on here. I don't, I don't want to be an aspirin. I want to be a movie star. Yeah. Not, yeah. You know, our concept of what we're doing. Yeah. Anyway, I said to the fella, the director, I said, look, I'm just going to go out and have a piss. I, yeah. With the full intention of walking out of the gaff. Yeah. I'm never coming back in again. And as I was halfway down the stairs, the fella come over and he said, you are coming back, aren't you? And I went, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that night I got cast in a Breck play, a Bertolt Breck play, The Respectable Wedding. Okay. And it went from there, really. So for when you say that night, what, because he took a shine to you? Well, I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. I, it, it was just, look, I'm a great believer in, uh, in, uh, the law of attraction. I am now. I weren't there then. Yeah. I think we're all synchronised to people throughout our life at some point. Now, yeah. I mean, we get given the clues. Whether or not we take the clues yeah. is another thing. But that was just at one time yeah. where I actually took the clue, really, yeah. and was being guided by whatever there was. Then I went to college where I met Jeff Bell, who's another actor that yeah. we both worked with and both know. He yeah. was in the same boat as me and that was it really. See the one thing I thought about you is that I look at you and I know straight away you're, you're authentic, you're the real thing. You know I'm from the same world as you but there's very, there's not that many people <laughs> out there. There's a lot of frauds and a lot of, you know I'm not saying you know, part of acting is being someone else but you, you also bring something else to the screen. When you're, when you're in the film you bring your obviously your acting ability but there's a depth with you and I remember before we ever met seeing and I thought oh this geese is real. So obviously you are from that world, even from a little bit. From the well, little I come bit from some... Bermondsey, you know, and we come from a place where, I mean, you can count on one hand the, the people that have got into our business where we come from, sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, it's very difficult, very difficult. You know, it ain't easy. No one gives you nothing, and there's still such a big snobbery in this. I, I mean, I've been involved in it for 20 years, and, and the snobbery that, that we that we come up against. When you say involved in it, you're talking about the film, filming and... Well, theatre, film. Yeah. I mean, theatre seems to be a lot easier. There's still a snobber in it because all of a sudden the theatre people go, oh, look, we, you know, we've got, we've got the right, the real thing here, you know, and, you yeah. know, let, let's be left-wing about this. It's great. Yeah. We're doing something for the little people, yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. And the film people are, uh, you know, bollocks, you've got half a chance of getting on. Yeah. You know, we don't want you people getting on. And I, I believe they don't want us people getting on. Okay. Because it gets in the way somehow, because we're too autonomous in our, uh, in our ways. You know, we don't lay, I don't know, I don't, you know. I don't know. What excites you the most, theatre or film? Film. 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 Definitely. Film. Okay. So you're saying to me that film excites you the most, but it's the artist to get on in. Did you say that? Well, I mean, if we look to our abilities and things like that and know what we can do, it shouldn't be harder to get on. Yeah. But I don't know, I don't know how they do it, you know. I, 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 I don't know how they, how their minds work, really. They see you do movies, they see you can act, they see you do this. They see, and you don't get the opportunities where you've got these other people that maybe go to RADA and go to all these sort of established drama. So I don't know. I don't know what it is. Where did you where did you do your where did you do your training? I went to a place called Morley College. Okay. It was where I got into it late. I actually got into a drama school, Weber Douglas, and I didn't want to do the three years. I thought, you know, I, I can get I, I was twenty eight or twenty seven yeah. and that got me to thirty. So what I've done, I went to Morley College, which was five nights a week for two yeah. years. Yeah. But you don't get an equity number. So I took my guitar and got up on stage and started, I got my equity card by gigging and busking yeah. on stages for, for 50 quid equity contract. Yeah. It was graft, mate. It was absolute graft. Do you like singing, though? 
I love singing. That's what that's me going really. Yeah. That's me going. You know. If it, if it was the, if it was the music industry or filming, you had to choose one. Now, where, where, where what, what direction would you go? Oh, they'd come a very very close equal. Yeah. Very close equal. Yeah. But I'm, you know, too old to do all that now. The, the music and every. See, the thing is with the music. I, I, I started a band when I was seventeen. But it's, it's like, I remember my dad, when I was 13, he bought, I, I, I was saying to him, I want a guitar. Yeah. And he, he went out and bought me a guitar. So I had this guitar, but I didn't know what the fuck to do with the guitar, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'm looking at it, being yeah. right, what do I do now? Yeah. And there was no one there to guide me, because there weren't no artists or, or whatever, people that, that had that knowledge to help us, you know. My old man was a docker. He'd be out in the docks all day. My mum had four kids. She'd be cooking all day. We lived in a two-bedroom flat in Bermondsey, down the blue. What do you do with a guitar? So I just pull it down. I tried violin lessons. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine I you. Tried violin. Violin. <laughs> I tried violin. I tried violin lessons, and I learned. I half learned how to play the uh, Beverly Hillbilly. Oh yeah, I like you, that. you know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I thought, you know, you, we never had anybody to sort of anyone that we respected to guide. I tell you a really big story in my yeah. life. A really big story in my life. When I was about twelve, I used to do music lessons in school, and I loved the music teacher, Mrs. Gregory. Oh, I remember her name. I used to sit with her on the piano and mm. just tinkle the ivories. But my mates, we had a class system. We had Alpha, A, B, and C in the classes. Yeah. All my mates went to B, but I got put into school on an A, in the A. So I wanted to go down to the Bs, because all yeah. my pals were in the Bs, and I, none of my pals were in the A's. So I purposely got myself put down to the Bs. But in the Bs, you don't do music. Right. You know, but I think, and the thing that, that's done me all my life is that this music teacher should have fought to get me back up there because she saw the potential, you know what I mean? I don't yeah. know if it was because of them days they didn't yeah. do things like that, yeah. but that's a big thing in my life at that, that moment. Isn't it a rough and ready London thing though? Because I'm very much the same. Don't we always blame everyone? Yeah, we do blame everyone, but it don't mean that someone can't be blamed. No. What I'm saying, though, is if you really wanted to do it, even at that age, well, I did. it's down to you. Well, I did. I did do it. You know, when yeah. I was 16, 17, I started doing it in bands and all that, and then yeah. I got caught up yeah. with my mates yeah. that are all up the things, and, you know, and I got caught up with that. This is what I'm saying. That if I would have run into some people yeah. that would have said, they're a lot like the London bubble, yeah. Or saw a bit of potential or something. It's about seeing a bit of potential, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. You know, I remember my old man when I first started my band up and all that. He was going like our manager, all right? I used to manage Tommy Steele. <laughs> right, fan part, you know what I mean? Right, all my mates were going, yeah. You know, yeah. in the band, I was going, no, no. that's a fan part. Yeah. You know. So you have to deal with all that, really, yeah. Rick, you know. Yeah. And for those who don't know, fan pop means, you know, giving you fanny, getting you Yeah, he was, he was, he was yeah. a typical sort of fan pop, yeah. you know. <laughs> it's a good expression. He's fanny, fanny, yeah. fanny yeah. you know. Yeah, he, you he, right. he used to just sort of... Yeah, and, and that was it, really. It was only when I went to college and met my wife, because I yeah. met my wife in college. Yeah. Then I become a born-again Christian. Right. You know, which which took it to another level, you know. Oh, it was mad. It was Are a, you a born-again Christian now? No, I can't stand Christianity. You don't like can't it? can't stand it. Okay. can't stand it. And, and for what reason? Because I mean, what got... Just very... In, in, a, in a brief... In, if, you, if there's a brief way of saying it, obviously, because we're going to be strapped for time. Well, I don't what believe... Got you, what got you into Christianity and what took you away from well, it? Well, my, my wife was a born-again Christian. Okay. And she wouldn't go out with anyone who weren't a Christian. Right. So I half... So you become a, a fan pot. I become a fan pot Christian. <laughs> yeah. One of them fan pot Christians. Yeah. But, as I was with her, and I used to go to church with her, all of a sudden I started taking the message of what Jesus was trying to put out. And okay. I still believe it. Don't get me wrong, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not into Christianity at all, but I've got the ultimate respect for Jesus, you know, yeah. as a man, as a person that spoke sensible things, sort okay. of thing. 
Then I started working for the church. The church employed employed me. Oh, so you actually got work from the church? I got work, but I got slung out of that as well. Typical Bermondsey boy, well, that is. No, but what, in, no, what, they, what they done, they sent me back to Bermondsey. This is the Church of England to yeah. work in a youth club right. that I grew up in. Yeah. It was a Christian youth club. Yeah. So all of a sudden, I started a church service. I yeah. went up to the, the fellow and went, no, I want to ch start a church service. So yeah. one Sunday... We opened the doors to the church and there was a load of kids in the, in the, in the graveyard that's in the back of the church smoking dope and drinking alcohol. So I went up to them and I said, look, come into the church, come to church. They went, no, oh, but we got... I went, no, bring it all in. So all of a sudden, all these kids are all smoking dope and boozing in the church. <laughs> sort of. But I didn't want that to get in the no. way because I truly believed in the message. I no. thought, you know... Good for you. If you need right. to be saved, you need to be saved. That's mm. what I thought in them days. You've got to be bad to get saved. Yeah. You can't be good to get saved. And that's the difference with Christianity. They're all good mm. wanting to be saved. Mm. There ain't no badness that you have to save. And they go out on the streets and save them. Yeah. It's a self-indulgent pastime, Christianity. Yeah. And I'm venomous against it now. I, I, I hate it. There's a rumour, has it, that you had a bit of a... Kerfuffle with the Archbishop. Yeah, Is that right. Tell yeah. me about that. No, what he slung. Well, when I was working with him, and they shut our, uh, they shut out the, the the work that we was doing, and you know I called him a, <laughs> you know, and he, then he, he got his people to chuck. Get, he, he was like a little bird. He was. But what he, I mean, you know, that's that, that's a big statement to make to say I called the Archbishop a. I mean, well, he was a. Well, that's it. So, <laughs> so what I want to know is why was he. A Tell, you know, because well, people because out there, you've no, got no, people no, out there I understand, no, listening I understand to that, they're going to think, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, whoa. maybe, you know, that's a bit strong what I've just <laughs> said there. But, I mean, give, give, give us the build-up to that. To well, that the build-up was we started this thing with these young kids, right? Yeah. After six weeks, these young kids were coming in and listening to what we were saying, yeah. and they weren't drinking yeah. and they weren't smoking in the church. I never told them not to do that. That happened. They'd done it on their own thing. They got it in their own thing. I'm not a person that likes to tell people to do things. If they get the message, they get the message. If they don't get the message, they if it carried on for six months, I would have had the phone. Cause all so, the old... fr so from what you've done, just naturally, them kids who came in with their smoke in their puff and their, you know, super tenants, whatever they was drinking, from them kids who come in, all of a sudden, naturally stopped. Naturally stopped. So it was working. Well, yeah, it was working. It was yeah. working... I've got two kids into a photography course. Yeah. You know, because I used to do drama with them. Yeah. I used to uh, do, that, you know, that Christian drama, but this yeah. was naughty Christian yeah. drama. This was coming from my perspective, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. This was naughty, really yeah. naughty, and they loved it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, one night, a couple of them threw, but the, 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 the PCC, it's called the Church Council, didn't really like what we was doing because we was a little bit sort of... Too uh, edgy? Too edgy. Two on the side, two real, really. And one day these kids come in and they started throwing tea bags at each other. And that was the reason that they took to shut the service down, a couple of tea bags. Now, to me, you know, Pete, the message is a little bit more dangerous than yeah. a couple of... They, yeah. And these were Bermondsey people, Rick. Yeah. You know, these were people that used to pray, that used to talk to you like yeah. me and you were talking now. Yeah. Close their eyes and pray like that... Uh, yeah. Heavenly Father, yeah. they don't, you know, they yeah. got the concept instead of the reality of it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I caused a big stink within the, the realms that I was working in. Yeah. And then obviously the Archbishop was paying me, you know, yeah. and I had to go up and see him because he was my boss. And I decided then and then I, I wanted to go to war with Christianity anyway from that moment. So you, had you to... know, so calling him a c was nothing to me. Well, you know, it is, you can understand, it must have been so tormenting to think that you've gone out there, you've touched the real people. They're dogs, mate. Yeah. They're dogs. There ain't no two ways about it. They're dogs. And I know what I'm saying now. They're dogs, mate. Because, because, of, because of what they're doing. I'm not saying yeah. that people, I'm not saying that, I, I don't get in the way of, like what I always say to people, yeah. you know, if you believe something's the truth, yeah. then it's the truth. Yeah. I can't have a go another Christian person, no. you know, if they I'm, actually, I'm a Christian. I know you are, Rick. Yeah. I know you yeah. are. I know you're yeah. a Christian. Yeah. But you understand what I'm I saying. Understand. I understand. I can I see it. Should I, I tell you for the reason why? Because 
for me, the, the, you know, Christianity, my, my, the way I take it on is I take what I, what I feel is right from it. And what you've just told me is totally wrong. It's out of order. You've gone out there. To me, you've gone out but there. But I'm out of order? No. What they've done is out of yeah, order. Yeah, they've done Because you was, you, was, you was there. You was grassroots. You got hold of the real people who needed to be helped, like you said. You've made, you've made and they've took it away. You've made a difference and they've taken it away. And I can understand your anger and frustration is enough to make you, you want to call anyone a cunt, no well, matter who they are. I was working with kids yeah. whose fathers were doing 20 years for our mobbery. Yeah. And they was going down the same, yeah. the same pipe. So I was the person that I would have wanted to met when I was their age. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. I was the person that, that could teach them the guitar. They yeah. can tell them to go to this and 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 and, and yeah. do all that, really, Rick. And uh, there was a look. There's a book out about my work. Yeah. They published a book. You know, it's called Gospel Exploded. Okay. Right. I wrote it with the with the vicar I was working with. Yeah. But at the end of it, when it all went bandy, I told them to take my name off the book. I don't want nothing to do it. But it was too late. The book was published. Okay. So they got me name off, but the book. Uh, have a look at Frit, Gospel Exploded. That was the work that we was doing, you know. Okay. And, you know, I've, like, I've adapted my own philosophy now, but yeah. I'm, 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 I'm very anti-Christian, yeah. but I'm not anti-Christ. No, okay. I'm not anti-Christ, and I don't know if I believe in God either. Right. You know, I believe in the universe. I believe in the law of attraction. I'm going to pull you right away from this now. Go on, pull. I'm going to, I'm going to throw you a curveball. Blind it up. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna ask you, what is the what's the most what's the favourite most favourite bit of work you've done? What's your favourite bit of work you've done? Your favourite film? My favourite film that I've ever done. Most enjoyable. Yeah, the, the spin out and, and, and been out there. I love the business. Mm. The business was one of the most enjoyable because we was all from the flats. Everyone in it was from the flats. So it felt real, didn't Everyone it? Everyone was in it from the flats, and we had eight weeks out in Spain. I know what the flats mean, but. For well, people, from, for from people out there, let's, let's explain what the flats is. Well, the flats are blocks of flats that we all used to live in, the council yeah. flats. Yeah. We call it the flats. flats. You, know, you know, we come from the flats. It's the same expression, my side of the water. Yeah. And as you know, like, I'm, I'm from the East End, yeah. and you're from South London, and there's always been a Judas! Little... <laughs> Judas! <laughs> <laughs> there's always been that talk. We, we got, I know, we, it's we got a lovely... Man. It's, it's so weird. I mean, as soon as I go over South London, as soon as I go through the pipe, it feels weird to me. And, it, and I know that from South London, it does you. It's only a tiny, tiny different space. But it's, is it, what, what, sum up that difference from South London and East London. I fancy the South London is a little bit more cute than the East <laughs> London, as to tell you the truth. In, what, what, in uh, what way? In, I don't know. I mean, do we... I mean, it seems to me that I... That all I'm talking about is South London is criminals, and they're right. not all criminals, you know. There's a lot of lovely people in, but we're all skin, you know. We didn't have no money. No one had no money. No one had a penny, you know. And and and, and thieving and and going out and get your own money. I know now it's wrong. I know now it's wrong. And yeah. you know, if my kids ever done anything dishonest, I would go absolutely ballistic at it. At it. But they ain't got her these days. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... You've got, you got two boys, is I've that right? I've got two little boys, yeah. yeah. Alfie and Barney, yeah. Lovely. How old are they? 13 and 14. And, and would 14. you want them to be actors? They are. They are already? They are. They, they belong to the Evenano Theatre group. Right. And they, they belong to another little local group called Theos. Okay. Which is an opera little group. Which they just finished doing... Tom Sawyer. Okay. So yeah, no, they they they're nowhere near the flats. Yeah. You know, they've never been near the flats. Yeah. You know, although I've took what I've took from the flats, you know, it's. I mean, you got. To, I, I, it sounds terrible what I'm saying, really. You know, it's. A, but I couldn't wait to fucking get out there, mate. I get out of it. You know, it was just oppression. You know, all just the time. Just to get away from the flats. Just to get away from the flats, yeah. really. Yeah, and it was the same my side all of the wall, like I say. <clears throat> we had the flats and, 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 you know, there was that anything to escape. And really, a lot, a lot of people, I, I think I can speak for both of us, a lot of people we know, including ourselves to a certain extent, have been sort of victims of society. 
Our, you, you know, we had to do what we had to do to get out of there and to get any kind of recognition, any kind of self-worth. What was your upbringing like? Give me a little bit of that, Ed. My old man was a getter, always had money, always had a gambler. You know, my mum was absolutely fantastic. Upbringing was okay. It was okay, apart from little personal things that go on in life. It was all right. It was, uh, never had no money. No. You know, four kids in them days. You know, my old man was a docker. He used to love a, he used to, f see what it was? My old man was a fiddler. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you, it was in your blood? Well, you saw it all day long, you know. You yeah. saw all, all your old man's mates coming. I remember my old... <laughs> I remember him, him and his mate coming in with a, with a whole lamb on their shoulders <laughs> once that they've had of a, of a lorry. Yeah. You know, but the thing is, they put the lamb on the, on the table, cut it up, and give it to every single person yeah. that was on the landing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They yeah. never kept it themselves. They... No. they Filled the, the fridge up, what they wanted to have. There was still sort of half a lamb left. Yeah. And they cut it up and give it to everyone in the, in the flats, you so know. So they looked after people as well. Well, right? that's what they used to do, didn't yeah. they? That's the difference, really. That is the difference. Rick, I, between, I agree. I mean, all these villains and all these people that do these bad, bad, but mad things, they all come from good stock. Yeah. You know, I'm not talking about my old man wasn't an arm robber. He wasn't that. He was a fiddler. He yeah. had four kids. You know, all needing shoes, all needing trousers. If your wages don't account for that, I don't think there was too much of a welfare state like they're getting these days. Yeah. You know, even now they don't. Need, that probably don't add up anyway. You've no. got a people are skin. And they're skin now. You know, you know, people are skin. Yeah. And what do you do? Who are the people that are saying that what you're doing is wrong? Yeah. Are all the people that ain't never had to do that? No. You know. So you've been on this journey, Ed. So Eddie Webber today, sitting here with me today, what's your ambitions? What do you want to do from here, Ed? What's your plan of action? It's all to do with film again, Rick. Right? I've, I've, you know, over the last couple of years, yeah. this conservative government, these, these politicians, they're taking a lot of money out of film funding, out of the British film industry. Yeah. And I, what I would love to do, and what I'm in the process of doing, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but, you know, I'd like, I'd like to try and get something together that, that the public can fund. I'd like to try and, 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 and get a, a socialistic, communistic vibe around a film fund where we can actually get to the point where the public trust us enough to maybe all put a pound in each, mm. you know, yeah. to, to sort a movie out. So your new